So, De-Evolution by Max Brooks. He is the guy that wrote the Zombie Survival Guide in World War Z, and he managed to make Sasquatch scary. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. I really mean that. I'm not, like, being facetious. I'm not trying to make a joke or anything. He made Sasquatch scary. Like, Bigfoot, or the Yeti, or uh, the Yowie. Is that, is that what they're called in Australia? Wait, ho hold on a sec. I want to check. Yeah, the Yowie. Okay, so that's the Australian name for it. But, like, yeah, most cultures have uh, tales of some sort of big, like, ape-esque man that uh, walks around in the wilderness, and we've heard plenty of myths and legends about it over the years, and, like, they're not real. I'm, so I'm sorry to break it to you, but Bigfoot isn't real, and neither are ghosts, okay? I, that's, that's a separate discussion. I don't want to get into ghosts right now, but I just, I just hate that people act like they're real. But the point is, uh, Sasquatch is not real, but in De-Evolution, Max Brooks basically says, like, hey, what if they were real? What would they be like? And then he, uh, basically sets the stage for this one specific incident where a bunch of people were killed by a pack of Sasquatches, or troop, uh, herd, whatever, whatever you want to call it. The story is essentially that there's this uh, small community in rural Washington state, like up in the mountains somewhere. Uh, the exact spot is never specified, but um, they're up there, they're very cut off from civilization, and then uh, one day Mount Rainier erupts, which is that is possible. Like, I don't think it's likely in our lifetimes, but it is possible. And that causes tons of issues all over the state. So, like, Seattle and a couple other bigger cities are, like, cut off from the world, and so rescue services and everything is focused on that. But at the same time, the community, uh, Greensboro, is cut off as well. It has no communication. The one road in or out of town is uh, covered by magma flow, and they are running low on food. That's their main issue at first. However, uh, as the days go on, uh, a troop of Sasquatches is also fleeing the disaster and they're making their way closer and closer to this community. And while they're basically like primates, you know, where they're mostly vegetarians, like they mostly eat fruits and such, but if they need to, they will eat meat. And so they start finding dead animals all over the place that were killed in bizarre ways. And then the Sasquatches see, oh, there's all these humans, food. Now, just like World War Z, this book is written as though it's nonfiction. You know, it, it's not written in the same way as World War Z, which was a series of interviews. This one is written uh, kind of like, uh, what was that book called? Uh, into the Wild, you know, where that dude uh, disappeared into Alaska and died, and the author basically just investigated his life and what caused him to do that and what happened up to that point, or like a bunch of other true crime novels that are out there. This one is like the author is investigating what happened in Greensboro, because everyone there went missing, and they don't know what happened to them. And it cuts back between his investigation in the present and the journal that one of the people there wrote. And my only real issue with this book, and even then it's not a big issue, is that the journal takes up a little too much of it, I would say. Like, it, okay, it's a journal that is that has way more detail than a regular person would write in their journal. Like, I get that, I can suspend disbelief for that. That's not a huge issue. There's plenty of other books where that same issue comes up, but you just you just gotta roll with it. Um, that said, I do wish there had been more time spent on the author in the present investigating things, because he uh, it's mostly just two interviews that he makes. Like, uh, there's one with a park ranger who figured out what was going on and is basically going into detail about, hey, here's why we never found these guys, here's why, uh, they, here's how they were so cut off, here's why they were in so much trouble, etc. And then the other one is uh, an interview with one of the people who went missing, one of uh, her brother, and he's also convinced that, like, yep, Sasquatches went in and killed people, even though that sounds crazy to your average person, he's very convinced of it, so. Those two interviews are really good, I just wish there had been a little bit more of it. Other than that, I have basically no complaints. This is, like, a perfect Max Brooks horror novel because a lot of people forget that when at the time when the zombie survival guide and World War Z came out zombies that was before the zombie craze so no one really cared about them and they uh, they were seen as kind of silly they were seen as just shambling slow dumb corpses that went brains and that was it but Max Brooks was one of the first people uh, at least one of the first people in this century who really st stopped and said, hey, what if these guys, like, really were just out to eat human flesh? Wouldn't they be kind of terrifying? And, like, they are, but as long as you're prepared for it, not that big a deal. 
And Sasquatch is kind of the same way, it's just that in this, the people are not prepared for it. Like, even though they're way out in the middle of the wilderness, surrounded by wild animals, they're kind of a New Age hippie commune sort of thing, and so they don't have any firearms or anything, and uh, like I said, they didn't have much food prepared. A pretty big theme of this book, uh, just like with World War Z, is how most people are just generally unprepared for disasters, or at least most Americans are generally unprepared for disasters. Like, not just us as individuals, but like our government and our society as a whole just don't know uh, what to do, or rather we aren't ready to do what we need to do in case of an emergency. You know, we don't have uh, enough sp food stocked up that won't spoil, like, you know, canned goods and such. We don't, uh, our grocery stores need constant deliveries or else they will be just out of food altogether. I'm, I'm sorry, my nose is running a little bit. I hope I'm not uh, touching it too much, but... And uh, if you're out in the middle of the wilderness and you're surrounded by, even if we forget Sasquatch for a minute, you're, if you're surrounded by bears and mountain lions and stuff, you kind of need to have some sort of firearm around. Like, I'm sorry, that's just, that's just the case. That said, the journal is told much more like a traditional narrative. You know, like, we have a main character, Katie, the one who's writing it. Um, when she first arrives at the community, she gets to know everybody and introduces them all to her journal, which is written kind of for herself and kind of for her psychiatrist, which, okay, it makes sense why she would uh, actually be keeping this and why she would be writing down so much because it's a way for her to deal with her anxiety. So, okay, I buy that. Um, and it also talks a little bit about like her marital problems and everything, which I get why they put that in. I just didn't care that much. Like it wasn't an issue really. I just, I was never into it. And then there's the eruption and them being cut off and them realizing, okay, we gotta make sure we have enough food and stuff. So we have to ration things. And then there's the slow buildup of like, hey, there's some weird animals out there. And most of the other people think like, it's a bear, guys, it's, it's fine. Uh, but then finally the Sasquatches reveal themselves and they all think, well, shit, now what do we do? And then the rest of the book is impressively intense. Like the last book I read that really had me this gripped in there and my heart beating this much and I had to periodically stop and just take a couple of deep breaths. I'm really not exaggerating when I say that. Uh, the last book to do that was Metro 2033, which is a really solid book, by the way. You should check that out. But uh, even if that one is written a little weird, but Deevolution is much more straightforward with its plot and with its characters. And so it's just, it's very, very intense. Like, even if I wasn't in love with most of these characters, most of them were just fine. The one exception being Mostar, who was this a uh, woman who was in the Yugoslav Wars, or rather she was a civilian in the Yugoslav Wars, so she's the one that when the disaster happens, she's like, hey, we, sh we need to prepare. Here's what we need to do. We need to ration our food and all that. Uh, so she was pretty good. Uh, the rest of them are just kind of there, you know? But that said, it is pretty great to watch the Sasquatches like attack people and then have to try and find a way to fight back properly. So they, you know, build some homemade weapons and they prepare themselves and they're like, these things are way bigger and stronger than us, and they're extremely intelligent as well, and they want to eat us, so shit, we gotta, we gotta get ready. It almost seems like the humans are de-evolving a little bit, which, I don't know, may maybe I'm reading a little bit too much into this, but like when the humans start building spears and axes and short swords and stuff, it seems almost like they're reverting to some pre-civilization hunting society which uh, used to presumably deal with the Sasquatches because th there's actually some bits in the interviews later where they talk about how uh, maybe the Sasquatches were some sort of giant ape that lived out in Asia and they came over to North America uh, many thousands of years ago around the same time humans did and they sort of evolved alongside humans, I guess. Like, there's an explanation given which uses Africa as an example, and it's like, hey, those animals there evolved alongside humans. Like, so before we were really even humans, and then up to the present day, so they were able to find ways to uh, survive against us. Whereas the rest of the world, a lot of the big animals, like mammoths, uh, died out because they got hit with us when we were, you know, intelligent, and when we uh, had technology and weaponry, and when we had social cohesion, so we knew how to hunt and stuff. And so... That's a really, really fascinating idea, and it basically says that, yeah, the Sasquatches 
uh, they evolved to learn how to be really good at hiding so that they could, I mean, whether they're prey or predators, that's a good skill to have in nature. And they also learned, like, eat meat and eat uh, veggies because, well, that, that's also just a good thing to have. Uh, but the main question is, were did they follow after humans as food or did they run away from humans? And it's it's kind of left ambiguous, but we know in the present they'll be willing to eat humans, so it's just, it's a really, uh, really creepy idea, you know? <coughs> and, well, I've, I've rambled on a little bit enough, but basically just, yeah, it's a really creepy story, really uh, bizarrely plausible, because, you know, it's Max Brooks, he just puts a lot of detail out there, and overall, uh, just really good. So if you're a fan of horror, if you're a fan of Max Brooks, I would say... Check this one out. Special thanks to all of my patrons whose names you see here, including my $10 and up guys, Apo Savalainen, Andrew Dixon, Ashley Watson, Ava Toomer, B. Quinn, Brother Santotis, Christopher Quinton, Emily Miller, Joel, Johnny St. Clair, Madison Lewis Bennett, Ronnie, Taylor Briggs, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, Topher Wheeler, and Ve Victus. Man, that, that list is getting long. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.